In this video, I'm going to be reviewing the Kaweco Sport Ice Fountain Pen. I'll go over the specs, I'll do a writing sample, and I'll tell you what I like and don't like about the pen coming up. Blake here with Blake's Broadcast. On this channel, I review fountain pens, paper, and ink, and as always, I put links in the show notes in the description below. And if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. It really helps out my channel. All right, let's get on with the review. Before I walk through the pen with you, I just want to talk a little bit about the background of the Kaweco Sport. So this pen is based off of a pen from the 1930s. This is a very interesting designed kind of pocket pen and it's a pen that's been made kind of on and off for a very long time. I've had models of the Kaweco Sport from the 1960s, which are just really beautiful pens and they really closely resemble this. Differences being, you know, they're more piston fillers, gold nibs, but the, the size and shape and everything is very faithful to those pens from the the 1960s. Currently, Kaweco makes the sport in a ton of different colors and materials. So you have plastic versions, solid colored plastic version is called the classic, and that does most closely resemble those older celluloid Kaweco sports. And then they also have various metals. They have a aluminum and carbon fiber one, which I actually did a review of on my blog uh, several years ago. I'll put a link to that in the description. It's kind of an interesting one because it, it does show that pen against the version from the 1960s that I also had. So it's an interesting comparison. This is it's a very interesting pen because of the design and because it has kind of survived you know, on and off for so long. And this is often one of those pens that people recommend to first time fountain pen users, partly because it's very affordable, but also because it's a very good pen and it's kind of a, a unique pen. Here we have the Kaweco Sport Ice Fountain Pen in the yellow color. The cap is this kind of neon yellow or green highlighter-ish color. The cap is very large in proportion to the body. You can see it fits very far down onto the body and that kind of makes for this pocketable size. The cap is faceted in this middle section here. There are eight facets. This end piece here is completely round, no facets. It doesn't carry to the length of the pen. We have a Kaweco Sport logo here in this metallic silver color. Looks really nice. Then up top, we have a finial with the Kaweco logo in silver. Looks pretty good. And then at the back here, we have these lines which are not, they look kind of like they're holes in the barrel. They're not. They're just ridges, I think, on the inside of the body. And then here we can see a cartridge. At the end here, it says made in Germany. Now, also I should apologize for the condition of my hands. I'm sorry about that. I've been doing a lot of hand washing these days. So let's take the cap off here. And just as a comparison, I'll put it down here so you can see. The cap is basically the full length of the body, not including the section. So it is a very big cap. It is significantly wider than the body. It's an interesting design. So let's walk through the rest of this. We have the sort of yellow color for the grip section here, and it kind of goes into the body here up to this threading here. And then we have the clear plastic body, which is pretty cylindrical. There's a little drop down at the end here. It takes international short cartridges like this ST DuPont Royal Blue. There are tons and tons of options in the international short size. Kaweco recently, relatively recently, came out with a converter, an optional converter that fits this pen. I do not have that converter. Because there is almost no room in here for a normal converter, the amount of ink that that converter holds has to be very, very small. Let's talk about the nib. The nib is a number five Bach nib 
with a Kaweco design on it. It's got the Kaweco logo, and I think it says Germany since 1889. I don't believe Kaweco has been in continuous production since that period. I think they've kind of been reborn a few times. I think this current iteration comes around from the 90s, I want to say, but if that isn't correct, let me know in the comments section. Now when posted, the pen becomes a full-length pen for the most part. So you have a very comfortable pen that fits in a very small package. Let's do some measurements and then some size comparisons. So looking at 10.6 grams, that's a very light weight pen. Uncapped, 6.19 grams, super light. This is a comparison. This is a Zebra Sarasa dry plastic gel pen. 10.9 grams. It's about the weight of a, you know, a cheap plastic yeah, throwaway pen. That's not to say that this feels cheap, but it's not a heavy pen. It is plastic. It's a very rigid plastic. There's not really any give in here. It, it doesn't feel cheap, but it's lightweight for sure. Now let's do some measurements here. Capped looking at about 107 with the fit needle, uncapped about 101 millimeters, then posted 133 millimeters. So when it's posted, it's about the same length as a normal uncapped full-size pen. So let's do some size comparisons. This is a Lummi Safari. This is a Pilot Metropolitan. You can see it's quite a bit smaller, more pocketable. One nice thing about the Kaweco Sport is that because it has that faceted cap, it doesn't roll around on the desk. They do make a clip for this, so if you want a clip, you can add an optional clip and clip it to things, but you don't need a roll stop for this because of those facets. That is the walkthrough for the Kaweco Sport fountain pen. Okay. Let's do the right example. So this is a Kaweco Sport Ice, and this is medium and ST DuPont Royal Blue. Let's do fast writing. So, one thing that I've noticed about this pen and these Bach number five nibs that Kaweco uses on a lot of their pens is that they tend to be on the drier side and that can mean some skipping like we're seeing here you know they're not particularly wet and I found once you get into like the particularly wide nibs like the broads and double broads the feed often has problems keeping up and they just sometimes they need a little bit of help uh, tuning to get them to flow properly. I find that the performance for this medium nib to be pretty good, definitely in the acceptable level where I'm not feeling the need to try and mess with it. For normal writing, for the most part, this keeps up really nicely. If you wanted to do really, really fast writing, you probably need a little bit more flow. Now, in the description, in the show notes below, I've put a link to a Kaweco AC Sport, uh, which has a, I can't remember, it's either a broad or a double broad nib. Now, that nib 
I found to be more difficult. The feed had more problems keeping up with the nib. But I think if you stick in the, the medium and under range, in my experience with having 10 or so of these Kaveco Bach number no. five nibs, you are pretty good to go. They don't typically need any special modification or anything like that. Now in terms of Reverse writing. This works pretty well with this pen. And we're getting a little bit of skipping there. But you get a pretty fine line when you turn it over so you can write a little bit with it upside down. In terms of flexibility, these are pretty firm, but you can get some line variation. I don't really recommend pushing on this kind of nib. I've had Kaveco Sports for over a decade. I have two other ones in my collection, and they're very good everyday riders, I feel like. So what are my pros and cons for the Kaveco Sport Ice Fountain Pen? Well, I like the classic design. It's a unique design. It's a pocketable pen, but when posted, you get something that is pretty close to a full-size pen. It comes in a lot of different colors and finishes. It's also a very complete line. You have you know, a drawing pencil, a more technical mechanical pencil. You have a ballpoint, rollerball, calligraphy nibs. It's just a very complete line. So if you're someone that likes to have the fountain pen, but also the ballpoint version or the pencil version, there's a lot here. It's very affordable, $25. You get a classic German-made pen with a, a very nice Bach nib. Now, in terms of cons, this is a pen that I do recommend in the you know under $50 range, but it is a smaller pen, and you know the grip section is not super wide. So if you have big hands, I kind of don't think you're going to like this pen. It works for me. I can write with it for a long time, especially with the plastic version because it's very lightweight. But there are definitely people who will not like the size of this pen. And for me, that really is the main drawback. The other drawback is, again, because of its size, you do not have the option of a full-size converter. Of course, you can use the standard international cartridges and refill those with your own ink, which is pretty easy to do. But, you know, if you're someone that wants a more normal converter with a big or bigger ink capacity, then there are other options out there. But overall, this is a really cool, interesting pen. So that is the Kaveco Sport Ice Fountain Pen. Do you guys have this pen? Do you like this pen? Let me know in the comment section below. And if you like this video, please hit that like button. And if you want to see more fountain pen paper and ink videos, please hit that subscribe button. Thank you guys so much, and until next time.